Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bugman. Uh, just wanted to give some tips today on basis, basically a pad slap. Uh, it happens to be another F-250, uh, but this works on just about any vehicle. Um, as long as your rotors are good, um, you want to make sure they're nice and flat. You really don't want to do what we call a pad slap, which is just replacing the pads. Um, if your rotors have grooves and stuff, uh, if you've been driving the vehicle, <clears throat> there's a pulsating in the brake pedal and stuff. Usually that's a sign that the warp rotors are warped. Uh, this vehicle in particular, now mileage is kind of low for what I believe on the F-250s. If you're a decent driver, uh, you can get a lot more miles than this out of a set of brake pads. But uh, this particular technician on the company truck, uh, they're heavy loaded. Uh, for you know, we're not pulling trailers, but they usually have a thousand pounds of water in the back of it uh, Six months plus out of the year um, And they according to GPS we have those on all of our trucks uh, They run 80 mile an hour and slam on the brakes a lot. Uh, they're considered a hard breaker hard corner uh, So With that I'm gonna go through and just give you guys uh, some tips and tricks. This isn't really uh, a how-to video Brake pads are pretty simple, uh, but I do want to give you guys some pointers to make this go smoothly for you um, and hopefully make things a little easier. Now, before I get into tips and tricks, I'll just show you uh, the pads that we had. Now, all three of the four rotors, absolutely perfect, flat. Um, I can't really show you the one rotor because I didn't actually take rotors off. It's not necessary when you're doing a pad slab. Slight groove in the backside of it. Um, I'll run over and show you this brake pad. Uh, she had just started eating metal and started a little bit of groove literally three days ago. So we're gonna go ahead and just do the pad slap. Not gonna replace that rotor. Um, usually I would. I've actually replaced pads with way worse rotors just to see how it would go. And I was broke at the time and didn't have the extra $400, $500 for a set of rotors. Um, and it got along all right. So um, this particular case, you know, we're just going to go ahead and do this. It's only on the back side. All the other rotors are perfectly smooth. So let me uh, show you these real Person, quick. New brake pads. Um, they were definitely needing replaced. They were down to the wire. Now this one here, that's where she started eating just a little bit of metal. And it was coming off. And the grooving in there, that is actually uh, from the factory. That's what helps get the pads to seal to the backing plate um, so that's not actually what's on the road back side of the rotor um, you could see a little arc right there I don't know if you can see it I can definitely see it in the screen here that's where the uh, just a divot I mean we're talking a couple thousands maybe um, so I'm gonna go with it not gonna kill the company on some extra money that May or may not be completely necessary. So we are uh, gonna get this finished. This is my last wheel to do on the front and uh, get her taken care of. Now she, she ate all four brake pads were pretty well gone. These are the fronts uh, on the driver's side. Uh, I've not seen backs get ate like this before. Truck only has 70,000 miles on it. Uh, usually, you know, 70 to 120 easily. You can get uh, brake pads on the front. This one ate all four. We bought the truck brand new, um, 70,000 miles. So you know, pretty hard, all four brakes, but at least uh, I guess factory-wise, the proportioning valve on this one's 2015 F-250. Uh, seems to be really good for using those back brakes instead of the fronts eating everything. So uh, a little bit different. So we'll come over and I'll got some other tips to show you. And another tip, so I've got the bolts taken out for the brake caliper. We leave the bracket on. It's not necessary to take them all off at once. Some people do, but biggest issue. So this is locked on here, pressure from the brakes. A lot of people sit there and use a crowbar and pry these off. A lot of the brake pads today, they have little nipples that come out and that really keeps you from prying this off without possibly creating damage to the rotor. Here's a trick. Irwin Quick Grip. So get that back side of the caliper. And then 
come over the front side of uh, I'm not using two hands. Front side of the rotor. Okay. Oh, well, look at you there. And that just comes right off. Now, big other tip always have a bungee cord. Um, use a bungee cord, hang it up here at the top, wrap it, you know, through here, and hang it from up here while you're doing your brakes and stuff. Do not let it hang by these hoses. It's not designed to take that weight whatsoever. You're going to cause a lot of damage. Now, I can't do this two-handed, but at least I can show you. I used, I don't have a brake pad uh, or brake caliper clamp. I used two quick grips. Hold on. Now I need to use the uh, other one. One second. I don't know if you can see that with the sunlight. And that's how I get my pistons pushed back in. Very simple. And then I hang the caliper up. I'm uh, done with that one. Over my neighbor's mowing his yard. Uh, slider pins for the brake calipers. Always, if you're doing any brake job, whether it's pad slap or full blown replacement of rotors and everything, pull these out, wipe them clean, and then re lube them. Now, I like to use first anti-seize, uh, completely lube them up, and then I brush it to where there's not a lot of excess. And then I actually will use, I like the green grease. Uh, Lucas Oil is one of my favorites. I like to use them. And then I kind of make a, it, green kind of goes away when you mix it. But anyway, uh, I put that on there pretty liberal and then work them in and out and in and out. Get as much grease, you have to roll them. There's a flat spot on all these that helps you to roll, uh, twist them and stuff. Put them back into the hole and then wipe off the excess. Uh, the green grease, I have not found to ever eat the rubber, uh, the boot itself. Some people try to say you never use a, that kind of grease. Uh, well, not necessarily green grease, but just plain old, uh, like pump grease that you'd use for wheel bearings. This is the higher temp grease. I don't like the red grease. I think it's too tacky. I kind of get worried about it, uh, not letting the slide go as freely as I want it to. Um, friends of mine that actually have a shop at a Napa, they're both a Napa and a auto parts this guy's been doing it for 30 years, he only uses anti-seize. Now, I've actually tried it uh, once on my F-250 and I had a, I still had corrosion issue down the road and water got in there, um, but I also don't know about how much the heat and stuff, I was having problems with that brake caliper um, overheating, so it was literally cooking the oil out of here. I don't recommend just using an oil. I want to use the anti-grease and I seize with a grease and the reason for that is if you do have an extra hot break and it will cook the oil to nothing and then you have no protection. Uh, but that's just my own opinion. Uh, I know a lot of shops may say something different but I do this. I've never had a problem uh, using both grease, both my anti uh, together works great every time. Eccentric style rims, usually those are factory. These corrode, you're putting aluminum onto metal or steel. And you gotta beat them off with a hammer. Let's see how bad that is. So what I do, I wire wheel the rim. And because you can't get a wire wheel in here, I just use two different, I use a flat file and a round file make sure I get that corrosion completely off. And then actually before putting the rim back on, um, I put anti-seize just on here and try to help the situation. I hate having to use a sledgehammer and beat a wheel off. Uh, a lot of guys do it. The one issue, I have actually busted a belt on a tire, uh, which you don't know you've done it until you're driving down the road and it's vibrating and beating you to death. So 
let's uh, get on to another tip. But yeah, that's uh, one thing I always recommend to do is get rid of that. You can stop beating your rims off. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, don't think the mowing is going to stop for a while. Basically my last tip, make sure your sliders for your brake pads. Use your anti-seize on them. You want these brakes to be able to slide and that not to corrode. Uh, I don't like using grease on that because dust and everything else collect on it and actually gunk it up, dry it out. Same goes for your caliper. Some people put it grease or anti-seize on the back. I don't like to do that. I go ahead and I only put it on the pistons and the other part of the caliper and so that way your brakes can move uh, that'll keep squealing down and rattling uh, so I will get this back on here and then last definitely last tip will be uh, go hot lap the vehicle you've got to do your about three 40 mile an hour uh, to five mile an hour hard brakes uh, then I want to say something like 50, 55, and go down to 20, so roughly something like that. Uh, you can look up different ways of doing it. You want to get these brakes really good and hot and get them set without uh, coming to a complete stop. When you start smelling the brakes uh, heating up really good, you're doing a good job. If you're not smelling brake, uh, burning brakes, you're not breaking them incorrectly. Then you want to run the vehicle until basically the smell goes away and the brakes are cooled back down before you park it and stop for the day. And then you will definitely have your truck set. Everyone have a good day. Please stay safe.